Hey everyone, I'm Jen and welcome to my channel. I'm a woman in long-term recovery who is also a CARC, a SERPA, a rape crisis counselor, and an Arcan trainer. If you look at my description box down below, you'll find the link to all my social media, as well as right here. And you will also find the link to Smacked, a documentary that I've been involved with. You'll also find a video that I did previously that describes all of my certifications that I just told you and how you can obtain them in New York State. Um, you'll also find Patreon and a whole bunch of other goodies. And you will find the most important, in my opinion, is my Amazon wish list. So you'll find Amazon wish list for goal bags, which is what I help you know people in my local community to get ahead with hygiene products, small food packages. Um, you know, lately uh, I've been we we have a really bad problem with having homeless people in our area where we don't have enough housing to go around. So you'll find tents, mylar blankets, things of that nature. And then um, I have a harm reduction wish list, which is available by request only because um, I don't want to trigger everyone and it's not everyone's cup of tea. And just feel like it's better off that way. Also, you will find Bella's little wish list up there as well. Um, I'm not even sure if there's even anything left on it. You guys really cleaned it up. So thank you. I'm very grateful for that. Um, yeah, I think that's really it for the intro. Today's video is one that I have been literally thinking about doing for the last year, but just haven't. And um, I just showed you guys a, bit, a video of Bella being baptized and she had a cross on it from someone who was very significant in that day. And um, today's video is about her. Today's video, as you can tell by the title, is about Pam Smart. So Pam Smart is a woman who is incarcerated at Bedford Hills Correctional Facility. She is 53 years old and she has been incarcerated since 1991, I believe. She was transferred to Bedford Hills Correctional Facility in 1993. She originally comes from New Hampshire and she was transferred to Bedford Hills in New York uh, supposedly for security purposes. Um, I read a lot of articles and she continues to say the same thing where she says that she thinks that her state just transferred her into New York state to try and just sweep her under the rug and made it get harder for her to do appeals and whatnot because she was in a different state, you know, legal visits and whatnot. So, um, I have a little cheat sheet because there's so much information convicted of conspiracy to murder witness tampering and accomplice to first degree murder against her husband, Gregory Smart. She was a young woman, a little backstory. She was a young woman who was newly married. Um, she met her husband during her last year of college, I believe, and they married quickly and they were married for less than a year, literally um, six days before their first wedding anniversary, he was murdered. She was working in a school. See, a lot of people, there's a movie, it's called To Die For with Nicole Kidman that is, I don't want to say loosely based off her story, but it's not a factual replication of her story. Um, because in there, they have the person being a teacher and she was not a teacher. She was working in a school and she was working with children and she was running a group, like an emotional support group type of thing. Um, she really wanted to be a news reporter, like a, a, a younger version of Barbara Walters. And when that didn't pan out and she couldn't find a job and she couldn't find a job making enough money doing that, she then went and did this job at the school. Now, while she was running this group, she had members of the high school that were involved. There was a 15-year-old. He was 15 when they first met. His name is Billy Flynn. And Previously to Pam starting this group, her husband had admitted to her that he had had a one night stand and cheated on her. And according to Pam, this just devastated her. It, it became the constant noise in her head. And while she was running this group, Billy, who was six years younger than her, she was only in her early 20s. I think she was 23. She was 23 when she was sentenced. So she must have been 20 when she got, you know, arrested. She was young. Um, I'm not justifying that that's okay to do bad things, but when we're young, we just, we have a different way of viewing things. You know, we, we're not, uh, our, our 
brain doesn't stop maturing until the age of 25. So she was convicted to life in prison at 23. Her brain wasn't even developing. Actually, at this point in time, one of, one of the articles that I was reading, she has spent more time incarcerated than she has on the outside. That's sad. So Billy started paying attention to her, giving her compliments, you know, just her typical 15, 16 year old kid swagger with a semi older woman and making her feel good about herself all the while, while all this noise in her head about her husband saying, you know, he had a one night stand, he stepped out of their marriage, yada, yada, yada. And within the three to six months of, of them talking and flirting, they got physical and they, within two, three month period, had had uh, relations probably five or six times. And during this world time that they had relations, not only were they physically intimate, but they were emotionally intimate as well. And she shared with him the fact that her husband had cheated on her and how she felt like she was less than and she was nothing and her whole world had crumbled. And Billy then decided to share this with three of his other friends. These three friends knew that they were intimate together. They had all been to Pam's house and whatever the case may be, they all felt very indebted to her, very much so. And during the trial, they, they tried to constantly, and this is, this is the part that gets me. They try to use the part and say that Pam was too sexual. She was too feminine. She was too womanly. She was too whatever. And that that was the basis of why these people did what they did, you know, and that she used, she wooed them and she intentionally seduced them, all of them, whether she was only physical with Billy, but you know, the way she spoke to everybody else and, and they made it a crime of sexuality. And for me, you know, as women, we're always told, be skinnier, be prettier, be less happy, be less grumpy, be more this, be more that, be less this, be less that, you know, and it just, it goes on and on. We're always supposed to be more something or be less something. And I feel like the way that this trial was prosecuted is exactly that. Like either you want me to be more feminine or you don't, either you want me to be less happy or, or more happy be, you know, men don't like chubby women be skinnier. Men don't like sticks, sweetheart. Put on a few pounds. It's always something. And I feel like this case, she, because she was feminine and sexual, yes, she did wrong, but not to the point of life in prison. So this is where it gets to be sketchy, in my opinion. She committed a crime. Absolutely. She deserved to go to prison. As she deserved to be in prison for the rest of her life. All four of her co-defendants were sentenced to prison as well. All four of them served their prison sentence. All four of them are free. Mind you, she is not the one who actually committed the act of murder. Her hands are free of blood physically, so to speak. She did not actually commit the murder. I'm not sure. Do I, do I think she was involved? I, absolutely. 100%. So do we think this 53 year old woman who was sentenced to life in prison at 23 because it was the state minimum, it was the state requirement, do we think she deserves to still be incarcerated? And the answer for me is no. I personally know her. I personally know the growth and see the things that she's gone through on the inside. First off, when she arrived in Bedford, within like the first six months, she got her ass kicked and she got her eye socket broken. She had a plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery because they, 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 they wrecked her face. Um, I know she has graduated school. She's now a tutor. I see the work she does. I see the way she works within the Catholic community, within inside the facility, helping ladies learn their faith and their religion and facilitate it. Um, like I said, she gave Bella a cross to wear. I think I actually, one of the pictures that I'm going to post for you guys, I think Pam is wearing the same cross, the one that she allowed Bella to borrow. Um, so I just feel like as a society, our rules back then were super, super harsh. And I feel like they were inappropriate. And this woman literally who had a part, a hand in the death of her husband. Yes. But didn't do the actual killing has actually received 
more time than the people who actually committed the crime. And I just feel like we need to go back in and we need to look at a lot of these cases that this has happened and move forward from there. And I feel like she truly has paid her debt to society. And I feel like it's time to see, to allow her back into the free world and to become a productive member of society and educate young women on, on things that unfortunately get overlooked in our society. As females, we're supposed to automatically just have good self-esteem and we're supposed to automatically just be happy and perfect, whatever that looks like to wherever the society is that we are. And that is just absolutely inaccurate. And I truly feel like Pam has paid her debt to society. Um, you know, this was a this was a really bad decision on her part. She was newly married, very young, six days before her first wedding anniversary. She had already been involved in an affair and the people and the, the, the young man that she was in the affair with Billy Flynn decided to take it upon himself and kill her husband. And uh, I'm sure her saying little things, you know, oh, God, I could just kill him or I can't believe he did this to me. You know, things like that. A 16 year old boy in his mind misinterpreted the fact if, that she really wanted him dead. This is my opinion, you know, but the fact is she is currently still incarcerated for life with no parole, no nothing. And she has conspiracy to commit murder, witness tampering, and accomplice to first degree murder. That's a hefty sentence. I feel like at this point, she should be given the chance of parole. She should go in front of a parole board like the rest of the inmates have had to, present herself and let her explain why she's not the same person, what she learned, what is different, what is this, what is that, and then let, let, let that that panel of her peers decide whether or not she should be allowed back into society. Um, this is just another case, in my opinion, of overzealous sentencing and us keeping people trapped. Um, I have been waiting, like I said, a long time to do this video. I hope you guys really all enjoyed it. Please go watch the movie To Die For with Nicole Kidman. It gives a very good basis to... Um, her story so you get a real feel for well how it was you know and for me there are certain stories that are personal uh, i'm going to be doing another one in the next couple of days actually uh for bella's godmother leanne armanini i know these women on i personally know these women and i've seen their struggles and their growth and how being incarcerated has changed them and and i just feel like there are some stories that really need to be shared and need to be re-examined by the judicial system and this is one of them so i hope you guys are all having an amazing week and i will see you in a few days and remember we recover loudly so those behind us do not suffer in silence bye